Hi everyone, welcome to this new deck tech video and today we're going to talk about Christmas Leia, Agro Leia. Why we call it Christmas Leia? Because it's a deck that has been designed around the Christmas 2023. Uh, she's wearing a winter jacket. This is the, the red, white, green are the color of Christmas. So that's, that's why we call it Christmas Leia. But anyway, uh, this is a, a deck that is another take on the aggro archetypes. Um, um, and it's a deck that um, a lot of people have been talking about recently because it has been very played during the last London tournament. And not only that, it has slightly outperformed uh, the Sabine Green deck uh, during that tournament. So I think... A lot of people are giving uh, Leia a second thought uh, because uh, since the release of the game, the consensus was that the aggro player preferred uh, Sabine Green over Leia Red. And uh, there's a couple of reasons for this, which we'll we explore into more details. Um, but recently, uh, she, she has performed pretty well. So if you're looking for a deck that uses almost the same cards as uh, Sabine, but want to have a different uh, a deck that feels a, a bit different and want to try something different, uh, uh, it's going to be easy for you to to switch from a Sabine uh, green to a Leia red and try something a little bit different. Uh, also, in this list, you can you can build a Leia deck just like you can build a Sabine deck. You can pretty much play the same card in both decks. So I would be able to play a very similar list. Uh, from my uh, Sabine deck to the Leia deck and vice versa. Uh, and minus a couple of different cards, notably because of the energy conversion lab as a base does change a few uh, a few card choices. But overall, they play more or less the same cards. So I also wanted to integrate into this specific list a couple of specificities and, and build a deck that is a bit more focused around Ewing reinforcement, which I think is particularly good in a Leia list. But without, a f before going into much details, I'm going to take a look at Leia as a leader. So we're going to take a look here. So Leia, as you can see, she has a free action ability that allows uh, you, you attack with a rebel unit, then you may attack with another rebel unit. This allows you what we call action cheating, which allows you to play two actions in one, uh, in one turn. And this is very useful for two reasons. First of all, it allows you to attack with your units before they get dealt with. Uh, and it also allows you to maintain initiative. Usually, if you, uh, you have a very wide board with a lot of units, it's very difficult to keep the initiative because uh, you're going to take a lot of actions to attack with all of your units. Leia Organa allow you to attack with multiple units at once uh, uh, in only one action, which gives you a better uh, ability to retain the initiative. Not only that, she benefits a lot with the initiative because if she has initiative and she's able to she's going to be able to use her ability on two different units more often it only works on rebels but the good news is that most of these strong rebel aggressive units in the games are rebels so this is not really a big deal at all once she's deployed she's basically a 3-6 with raid 1 so 4-6 and she still maintains her ability she can attack and attack alongside another rebel unit when she attacks she deploys slightly later than Sabine on turn four, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the 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 the, the leader. So going back to uh, to Leia versus Sabine, why would you want to play Sabine, and why would you want to play Leia? So what are the advantage and inconvenience of each of them? So if I I'm going to start first with the advantage of Sabine and the reason why Sabine has been considered the stronger aggressive leader so far. First reason is the fact that uh, Sabine plays green not as a primary but as a complementary color, meaning that she can run Energy Conversion Lab, which is a big deal because, as you know, Energy Conversion Lab is the best base in the game. 25 HP base are particularly strong in aggro because you don't really care much about starting with 5 less HP because you're going to be the aggressor. Uh, ECL allows you to, uh, atta to, to attack with giant unit with Overwhelm, is very powerful with K2SO, it's very powerful with ba uh, Steadfast Battalion. Allows you to put a large unit on the, on the battlefield, kill something and deal a bunch of damage to the base. It is very, very powerful. And this is the primary reason why people have been considered Sabine a stronger, le uh, a stronger leader. The second uh, re uh, advantage of Sabine over Leia is the reach. Sabine has a better ability to reach 
to deal damage directly to the base without the opponent being able to interact with it, which is a big deal. Um, so it's a very good combination with for a cause I believe in, deal direct damage to the base, and you can finish the job with Sabine. Um, the third advantage of Sabine is her ability to deploy in the game faster, which in an aggressive game plan is very beneficial. The earlier you appear, the more damage you can deal. Uh, the earlier you can deal damage, the more damage you deal, the more pressure you're putting on the opponent. On the other hand, what are the advantages of Leia? Leia, in my opinion, has a stronger leader ability. Her leader ability is, even though you are typically only going to use it maybe once or twice per game, whenever it's going to be used, it's going to be massively impactful. So she's more punishing because if the opponent does not deal with your board, if uh, your opponent does not manage to clean the board, uh, she will kill you much faster than the Sabine deck can because our, our ability is extremely powerful when there's multiple units on the board. So in that sense, she's more punishing, because if you do not deal with our board, she will kill you, and she will kill you so much faster. The second main advantage of Leia is her ability to keep the initiative. Sabine Ren's ability costs an action uh, on top of everything else you have to do, so it's an ability that you're not always going to use. Whereas Leia saves you an action, so when you're using it, not only are you are swinging huge damage, you are also uh, uh, being very action efficient, which gives you a better ability to keep the initiative, and uh, with that also the ability to use the ability to higher effectiveness. A third advantage of Leia is that even though she deploys one turn faster, she is much more difficult to deal with. She obviously deals more damage, she deals four damage instead of three when she attacks the base, but the 6 HP is the really important part. Uh, it's really uh, the ability that uh, allows her to keep her alive uh, against uh, some of the most popular removal in the game, notably uh, Takedown and False Choke. Those two cards one-shot Sabine and cannot actually kill Leia in one turn, which is also a big deal. So now that we've taken, uh, taken a deeper look into what would you want to run a Leia instead of Sabine, let's take a look at the deck in general. As a base, we're running Tarkin Town because obviously we need red as a complementary uh, color because red contains all the strong, aggressive um, uh, rebel cards in, in the game. And Tarkin Town, even though it is not as good as ECL, remains a very powerful base in my opinion. Uh, in a sense, it performs the same role as ECL, as ECL really often is going to be a, an ability for you to deal uh, to, to deal with the opponent units, uh, which sometimes Hagro has to do. Takin Tan can do the same thing. It just happens in a different way, where typically the opponent is going to be ambushing your unit, takes some damage on his own unit, and then you can finish those units with, with, with the Takin Tan's ability. Uh, so moving on now to uh, so the, the, the global idea of the list. Uh, we're going to be putting a lot of early pressures with some very powerful two draws, a so Battlefield Marine, Queen Squadron, we'll follow that up with, uh, we go, we're usually going to try to to arena dodge the opponent, so the opponent plays on the ground, we'll try to play in space, the opponent plays in space, we'll try to play on the ground. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail on how uh, arena dodging is performed, but you can take a look at my Sabine video where I get into more details about that. And the ID, of course, is going to be trying to put pressure and deal as much damage as possible. In the later stage of the game, we are this uh, we are going to try to finish the game with direct damage, like for a cause I believe in. And uh, we're also going to be applying U-wing reinforcement, uh, which I think is particularly strong in Leia uh, because Leia really benefits from very wide board because the more units on the on on the battlefield, the more she's going to be able to use our, our leader ability. So I think U-Wing Reinforcement is particularly strong in this deck, and we've built the deck to perform particularly well with U-Wing Reinforcement. We get into more details when we we'll talk about U-Wing Reinforcement. So now let's talk about uh, all the different cards in the deck, starting by the cheapest one. And here, first of all, we're going to see a card. We're going to talk about a card that typically doesn't see play in uh, in 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 the Sabine deck, and it is Benthic Two Tubes. So Benthic Two Tube is going to be our only non-heroic card in the entire deck because I think the card is worth running in a Leia deck. And the reason for it is simply because this card has a very strong interaction with Leia's ability. So if you have another red unit and Bentic Two Tubes is... Uh, uh, you have two red units and, and both of them and Bentic Two Tubes and another 
uh, aggression unit, which is not that difficult to do. You can use the layers ability and you can attack with Bentic, uh, give the, the rate 2 bonus to the, uh, the, to the other unit and benefit from that bonus and attack with that other unit right away. So typically this interaction is very difficult. Uh, Bentic 2 tubes in a regular deck is very easy to disturb because what happens is that you can attack with Bentic and then the opponent is usually going to be dealing with a unit that has the rate 2 bonus. But uh, with the Leia, it becomes a lot more difficult to interact with that interaction because the attack of Bentic and the buff and the attack of the unit that is buffed happens at the same time. Uh, so I think it's a very powerful interaction. It's It still remains very easy to disturb and relatively easy for the opponent to interact with, but it becomes a lot better because of Leia. And if your opponent let it go and does not deal with the Bentic, is going to take a huge amount of damage. So car, a card like Bentic is extremely menacing for the opponent. Another great thing about playing a lot of one drops in a Ewing reinforcement deck is that it gives you a lot more flexibility and allows you to utilize the seven resources that Ewing allows a much far more easier. So for example, if you want to grab two six drops, uh, you need to have a one drop to complete that six drop package uh, to, to be as efficient as you can. So uh, so typically, uh, Bentic is going to help uh, squeezing an extra unit from the Ewing reinforcement that you wouldn't be able otherwise. And if we don't play Bentic, then the only one drop we play is Peck for Soldier, so that's going to make it a lot less consistent to be able to get this extra one drop. So it really helps with uh, Ewing reinforcement to populate the board as well. Uh, next, we got the Spec for Soldiers, which is here mostly to disable the enemy Sentinels. And just once again, as a one drop to complete with Ewing reinforcements cheap, uh, you need to add some board presence, the more board, the wider board we had, the more difficult it is to, for the opponent to deal with, the, the easier time we're going to have to use Leia's ability. Battle of Marine, best to drop in the game, absolute auto-include in all those uh, green-white aggro decks. Almost the same thing can be said uh, with Sabine, that's very classic, very efficient two drops. Green Squadron, is very important, uh, best to drop in space, and having a good balance between space unit and ground units very important in this deck to be able to arena dodge the opponent and be able to play on both arena at the same time and try to attack where your opponent is not. So because arena dodging is important, we try to have a balanced amount of, of space units and ground units. So the best, the next best space unit we can play on turn one is Alliance X-Wing. Then on the two drops, we got, of course, the Echo Base Defender. Uh, just very efficient, very good sight line, aggressive, and has the Sentinel, which is very useful. It obviously is a Rebel, and all those units are obviously heroism for the four cause I believe in. Next, we got Fighter for Freedom. Uh, obviously, um, a very good card, uh, very punishing if it stays on the, on, 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 the, on the board, and has the Saboteur keyword. I think Fighter Freedom is specifically strong in this deck because we're playing Ewing Reinforcement. And Fighter for Freedom is one of the ways we can deal direct damage to the opponent. So the way that works is we play U Ewing Reinforcement, you, you grab Fighter for Freedom alongside two other uh, red units, and you can deal two damage to the base. You play Fighter for Freedom first and then play another red units and another red units, and that deals two damage to, to the opponent base, on top, of course, of adding three units on the, on the ground. Fleet Lieutenant, one of the best aggressive cards in the game. Immediate impact on the board, a gift plus two attack. It's an action shooting card that allows you to keep the initiative easier and also uh, puts a 3 3 on the battlefield. Just an excellent, excellent card. Absolute auto include in all aggro decks and almost auto include in almost every, every heroism deck in general. It's such a great card. Uh, if you want to area to continue to area dodge, you need a, a good two drop, uh, three drop in space, and red three is the best one we get access to. Once again, really beneficial. Uh, I think red three is a little bit better in Leia than it is in Sabine, because um, it is easier uh, because Leia has access to this ability all the time. Le Sabine only has access to this cheating action cheating ability when she has Rebel Assault, and it does cost her one resources. Leia can do it at all time for free. And being able to attack with multiple units at once allows you to benefit. Uh, if you have an initiative and, and access to a red 3, you can really swing huge chunk of damage uh, before the opponent can interact. So I think red 3 is slightly better in Leia than it is in Sabine. Uh, next, we got, of course, the wing leader to grow our units beyond, uh, beyond uh, what is possible to kill. 
and growing uh, Leia Organa, uh, specifically our leader, is going to be super impactful as well. An excellent two drop, but you have to be playing it very carefully. Uh, sometimes uh, buffing a unit on turn two can be easily answered, so it really depends on what kind of deck you're building, uh, you, 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 what kind of deck you're playing against. If you know the opponents can waylay well your units or kill them very easily or even traitors them, you have to be very careful about this. So it's it's a very powerful card, but you have to be very careful on how you run it. Be very aware of what the the opponent answers can be to that the, to this kind of play. The safe play is, as I said, so risky play would be to bo boost something like an A-Wing or Battle of a Marine, but if you can do it at the right time uh, against the right opponent, it can be extremely impactful. If you want to play it safe, simply just use the Wing Leader to buff your Leia, and that's going to be very impactful, make, making a Leia tremendously harder to kill. Um, next we got K2SO. Not as strong in, in Leia compared to, to, uh, to Sabine, because we don't have access to Energy Conversion Lab. But it remains, a very, of course, an auto-include in the deck, uh, a way, of course, to populate the board. Uh, and uh, you know that K2SO will deal at the very least 3 damage to the opponent, on, on top, of course, of forcing him to mobilize some resources to, be, to deal with him. Uh, next, we got uh, what is a 5-drop in the, in, the, in the deck. It is the Millennium Falcon. So uh, this is probably the most surprising card that you're going to see in, in this deck. And I really, really like Falcon in this deck for two reasons. So, basically, as I said, in this deck, because of the aspect penalty, it is basically a 5-drop. But Million Falcon is very much um, a finisher. It's the card that, you, that you're that you going to be playing uh, uh, at last in order to deal the less bit of damage to the opponent. Because it is basically a 3-4 unit that comes into play ready. Uh, which is extremely impactful because... And because not only because it comes ready and because it is space, it is relatively difficult for the opponent to block, and is going to deal you those last bits of damage on po on top of adding a, a threat on the board. So it is very impactful. You're going to have to play the the Falcon tax, but if you play this as a finisher, you don't really care about playing the tax whenever you're in the later stage of the game because usually uh, you you have some spare resources to spend on the Falcon. Um, so that's the first thing I really like about Falcon. The second thing I really like about Falcon is that it is a great pull from U-Wing for reinforcement. So something to keep in mind is that U-Wing for reinforcement does not care about aspect penalty. So you play your U-Wing, this for the from the perspective of U-Wing, this card costs three. So you can basically play this card for three U-Wing U-Wing alongside something like a red three or um, uh, or um, like a, or an eco base defender or anything else. And you'll be able to have this 3-4 attack unit that can attack right away, which gives U-Wing an, an immediate impact on the game. Anything that can give U-Wing an immediate impact on the game makes it tremendously powerful. If you ever played uh, Han uh, Green, you probably know how powerful Minion Falcon is out of U-Wing reinforcement. And here we have abilities to boost it, with Red 3 notably. Uh, just be careful, you cannot boost this card in for uh, with Wing Leader and Fleet Lieutenant, unfortunately. Uh, but it remains an incredibly impactful card uh, that that basically will will give you an extra element of reach uh, from your wing, your wing reinforcement. And as I said earlier, even for five resources, it's not a bad card to play, uh, which makes it a very very strong option. If you're gonna build an aggro deck focused on your wing reinforcement, I I strongly cons uh, encourage you to to try uh, Minion Falcon in your main board. Even though it makes the, the budget of the deck slightly more expensive in terms of in terms of budget, um, uh, but if you do ha happen to have the card, give it a try. It's a very in uh, it's a very nice card. Next we got Garia Attack Pod, which is a classic um, uh, for as a as a strong late game finisher uh, for the deck on the ground. Also an excellent card to put from U Wing Reinforcement. You can. You play U-Wing Reinforcement, you can play Gary Attack Pod alongside a Specful Soldier. Specful Soldier will disable the enemy Sentinel so you can attack with Pod and win the game. So if I had to compare uh, Attack Pod with the Falcon at 5, so Falcon costs 1 less, deals 1 less damage, but has the advantage of being in space, so harder to block. So you see, even for 5 resources, Falcon is still very comparable to Gary Attack Pod in terms of its impact on the game. Of course, then finally we got the U-wing reinforcement. Uh, I think U-wing reinforcement is slightly better in Leia than it is in Sabine for two reasons. The first reason is that uh, Sabine, 
uh, sorry, Leia has an easier time going up to six resources uh, because of the leader. And uh, that means that going up to seven is not really that big of a, of a deal for the deck. And as I said earlier, Leia really benefits a lot from very wide board. And one of the best ways to get a wide board in the later stage of the game is Ewing Reinforcement. I think this, guy, this card is going to be a great asset, specifically against control, to deliver the final blow. You can, If you have one unit on the battlefield, you can basically combine Wing Leader plus Fleet Lieutenant to deal a bunch of damage to, uh, to, to something. Uh, if you don't have any unit on the board, you can still deal, deal direct damage using... You can still have some, some out-of-hand damage with Falcon, Gary Attack Pod, or even Fighter for Freedom. Just an extremely impactful card. And every time you play Ewing, you're going to be, be able to play a different set of cards uh, for different situations. Now into the more situational card, we got Metal Ceremony. Uh, which I think is slightly better in a Leia deck than it is in Sabine, because it's going to be... You can because you can attack with multiple units at, at once uh, more consistently with Leia. You'll be able to use Metal Ceremony earlier in the round and give your unit plus one plus one earlier in the round, which can be beneficial. Uh, it still remains a relatively situational card, so we only play two copies of it. Of course, we play for a cause I believe in, which is very consistent in this deck. We're only playing Bin Tick to Tube, our only non-heroic card, and obviously the ultimate finisher that you desperately need in this deck since. You don't have the same uh, ping ability of of, Leia, of of Sabine. You need to have reach. And uh, and that's it for the deck. So now that we've talked about the uh, the, the card by cards, we're going to co go into more details into the sideboard plan. Uh, and first, talking about aggro. So against aggro, it's all about speed. Typically, aggro, you're going to be racing the opponent. Leia is extremely good at racing because of her uh, of her action cheating ability. Uh, if the if our board is not dealt with, it becomes incredible incredibly difficult to um, to it becomes incredibly difficult to to uh, to race her because she can deal so much damage so quickly and still maintain the initiative. So in this case, we're giving ourselves more tools to race. So we're going to, giving ourselves Rebel Assault. Uh, Rebel Assault, some people play it in the main deck in Sabine. Uh, in my opinion, it's a little bit redundant with their ability. Uh, with that being said, if you are playing in a context where there's literally no... Uh, where your unit don't really de get de get killed, uh, Rebel Assault is a very uh, good amount of um, extra damage that you can have. And if uh, you have happen to have Sabine into play, while you're playing Rebel Assault, you can actually attack with three Rebel units at once. So you play Rebel Assault on the Leia, so you attack with Leia alongside another unit, and then Leia's ability triggers, so you get to attack with a third Rebel unit if you happen to do that. That is extremely impactful, once again, in a racing situation when you're trying to race against another aggro deck. Uh, we're also adding three copies of Bright Hope, which is an excellent way to block the Space Arena. Bright Hope is simply amazing against aggro, because once Bright Hope is in play, things becomes a lot more difficult for the aggro deck. As far as what we are cyborning out, we are taking out Ewing reinforcements because typically games don't go long enough for Ewing reinforcement to be relevant. Those games are very, very short, so Ewing reinforcement is simply too expensive. Because we are signing out Ewing reinforcement, we are also signing out Millennium Falcon because without Ewing for reinforcement, Millennium Falcon becomes a lot worse. Against Boba, we are basically adding three copies of Bright Hope and taking out three copies of Specful Soldiers. Uh, once again, it depends on what kind of version you're playing against. If you're playing against Boba Yellow, and Boba Yellow has a, can sometimes has a lot of Sentinels, notably Gormorn Guards, you can consider keeping the Specful Soldiers. Uh, you can also consider adding one copy of Dissembling Fang Fighters if you're running against someone who plays a lot of Traitorous. Um, we, we play one copy of, of Fang Fighters in the side, that can be picked up by the Ewing reinforcement as well. But really the main card you want to see against Boba is Bright Hope because it's an excellent way to deal with Fire Spray. Usually Boba versus, uh, versus Agro is very much a race uh, and, and the king of racing is, is, uh, is, uh, is Fire Spray. Fire Spray is really one of the best racing card in the game so you really want to have uh, the Bright Hope to block it. Uh, it's very, uh, a very efficient answer. Um, yeah, typically Boba do not run many Sentinels, so Specful Soldiers is an easy card to, to, to take out. Finally, against Control, we are going to be adding 3 Wolf, uh, which is an excellent card 
to prevent the opponent from gaining any HP as well as being a very decent 2-drop. Just be careful because Wolfie is not a rebel, so you cannot boost it with uh, um, Fleet Lieutenant or, uh, or Wing Leader. But very good against aggro in my uh, very, very, versus control in my opinion. Uh, what we sideboard out is typically Metal Ceremony. It's very difficult to maintain a big board uh, versus uh, control, so Metal Ceremony often are difficult to use in this matchup. And then also Benthic to Tube for the exact same reason. Benthic to Tube is very difficult to use against control because there are just too many removals. Okay, now that we've reviewed the, the, the sideboard plan, let's go into the mulligan. So, got a couple of mulligans here. Uh, this is obviously an awful end, no turn 1 play. Uh, the deck is really stable in terms of turn 1 play. We have 12 uh, 2 drops and also multiple 1 drops that can be played as well. So, you can mulligan this very confidently. And here, we draw another hand without any 2 drops, so that's very unfortunate. Um, yeah, this this is a really unfortunate, but this is still you can still win a game with a hand like this, even though you're missing turn one play. Double K two SO and four cards, I believe in, is a lot of reach, so very dangerous. I would typically resource Million Falcon and Wing Leader. Whenever you manage, to, you have a very bad hand like this, you need to rely on reach to reach to, to to win the game and hope that your opponent doesn't heal. And that's exactly what we the plan is going to be in this case. Double K two SO. Uh, that's already 6 damage, plus 4 cards, that's 10 damage out of hand. So hopefully we can win the game like this, even though of course it is very compromised. So I would typically uh, resource the Wing Leader and the Falcon and try to, to, to play on that aspect. Uh, play K2SO, once k 2 so is dealt with, play another K2SO, play 4 cards, play multiple 4 cards. That's usually the way you can win the game whenever you have a terrible start. Typically aggro win the game uh, with a horrible start by playing multiple copies of 4 cards, followed by multiple copies of K2SO, and your opponent not finding any heal and taking too long to kill you. That sometimes can happen. Okay, this is a much better hand. Uh, we'll resource definitely one Falcon and one Attack Pod, keeping the other Falcon as a 5-drop. Turn 1 Battlefield Marine, turn 2 Fleet Lieutenant, and then we hope we're going to find some, some turn 4 eventually. Okay, this is a very good hand. Uh, turn 1. Uh, we can area dodge uh, between Alliance X-Wing or Sabine Ren, play the Wing Leader to boost the Sabine or to boost the Alliance X-Wing. We're typically going to resource the, uh, or the uh, uh, Marine, so we're typically going to resource the U-Wing Reinforcement and the Sabine here. In this case, uh, Battlefield Marine is actually the better ground. Uh, two drops, and then the Wing Leader to boost it, uh, depending on the matchup and depending what other uh, three drop we may find later on. And here, an, another uh, decent hand, and we cannot arena dodge with this, unfortunately, but still, turn 1 X-Wing, turn 1 Fleet Lieutenant, we're going to be resourcing the gear, Guerrilla Attack Pod, and the Metal Ceremony, I almost never resource for a cause I believe in, this card is simply just too good to pass, and K2SO also is a card that I very rarely resource, it's such, it's such an amazing card. And one last uh, one, um, here in this case, this is a pretty decent hand, we can go turn 1 A-Wing, turn 2 Red 3, I'll turn to uh, uh, Fleet Lieutenant and uh, put a lot of pressure. We got then K2SO, Fighter for Freedom combines very well with Spec for Soldiers, multiple red units to trigger the Fighter for Freedom is nice. And uh, yeah. And uh, that's it for my deck tech for uh, Christmas Leia. So if you want to, if you already own a Sabine green deck and you want to try something different, uh, and, uh, and you want to have a different take on aggro, I would strongly suggest you to, 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 to get this deck. It's a very, very cheap to put together. You get yourself, a, 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 once again, once you have this set, you just need the, the Leia. And as I said, you can run a version that plays the Falcon and you wing reinforcement in the main deck. You can decide to play a version without Falcon. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting deck uh, to play. So. Uh, I'm sure some people are going to ask me, what do you play if you're not playing Falcon? Well, if you're not playing Falcon, I would consider playing Bright Hope in the main deck. Uh, I think Bright Hope in the main deck, uh, it's a card that is almost decent against almost everything. It's a bit worse against Control, but it's really a card that is decent in general, so there's no problem playing uh, 
Bright Hope into the main deck. And then in the sideboard, to replace the Bright Hope, I would probably play some Admiral Akbar. Uh, so that's probably the replacement that I would consider if I was going to be playing against, if, if, if you don't have the budget to play a Million Falcon. Anyway, thank you very much for following that video, and I'll see you next time for another one. Uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe.